What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about another one of the tools contained inside of the Fredo Tools tool set that you can download from developer Fredo 6. So this tool set is available for free and you can download it from the Sketchication extension warehouse. I will link to that in the notes down below. Uh, note that this extension was voted on by my supporters on Patreon. So one of the perks of supporting the show on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to support the show, uh, maybe vote on the extension that I cover every week, make sure to check that out at the link in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one thing to point out about this is when you download Fredo tools, you're also going to want to make sure to download LibFredo, which is Fredo's library of different uh, plugin enabling scripts. So I will link to that in the notes down below as well, but some of these are going to rely on that. So you're going to want to make sure that you install that before you install Fredo tools. Um, and so there's a ton of different tools in here. I've talked about some of these before. I think I've even talked about Curvature before, but I wanted to talk about it again and talk about some ways that you can use it to create some more interesting shapes. So um, in this case, this is a collection of tools from Fredo, and he put them all together in one collection just to kind of uh, reduce the footprint in SketchUp. But this one, what it does is it takes curves and it shears them upwards to create ramps and like curving paths. So for example, in the very simplest way, if we were to select this curve and we were to run Curvature, it would ask us for a base height and a top height. And also um, if we want to reverse the curve orientation or not, meaning the direction that this, this goes. And then if we want to generate geometry in a group, which in this case, I'm going to say yes. But what we've told it is we've told it to start at zero inches. That's going to be the base. And then to shear this line up in a curve up to a total of six feet. So if I click OK, what that's going to do is that's going to take this curve and that's going to shear it up six feet, meaning it's taking it and it's making it follow the same curve that it was following before, but now it has an upward mo movement so that the total height here at the end is six feet. Notice this doesn't create a face in here. We'll talk about that in a second, um, but it does create the geometry and then we'll talk about a way to generate those faces in a moment. And so not only does this work on individual edges, it also works on sets of edges. So for example, if I have this curve right here and I select both edges and I select curve a shear, it'll shear both of them to whatever height I set. So in this case, I'm going to leave this as generating a group. Um, I'm going to leave the base height to zero and I'm going to click OK. You can see how what that does is that actually generates this object in a group, but it generates the whole thing moving upward, almost like you have a road moving up a hill or something like that. So this has a width and a depth associated with it because it have multiple different parts and pieces in here. And so now I want to talk just for a second about how to generate faces inside of these curves um, because a lot of the time what you're going to want is you're going to want this to have a face in here but you don't want to have to come in and um, you don't want to have to come in here and individually draw little lines in here to create the faces so first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to undo this and i'm going to generate this but not in a group so i'm going to run this and generate in a group is going to be no and i'm going to click ok then we have the raw geometry in here well, I'm going to use another one of Fredo's extensions. This one's called Curveloft in order to generate the skin in here. And what Curveloft does is it actually generates skins based on edges. So in this situation, for example, I can click on this one, this one, and this one, which gives me a closed shape. And then we can use the extension Curveloft, which I will link to in the notes down below, to fill that in. So you can see how I can just click and click again and we'll generate that face in here. And so this is a really easy way to add the faces that Curvature does not add. So again, we'll just skin this face and then we'll select these edges. Notice in this case we're selecting four and we'll skin this. So you can see how this automatically adds in edges in here to make this a face. So now what we have is we have a solid ramp and you may need to do the same thing on the bottom to really make that a solid shape. So really you're gonna to wanna to select all of these and run curve off like that. So now if you take all of this and you may need to explode it all to get it to be individual geometry. But if you explode it all and then you put it in a group you can create your ramp as a solid really easily. Just make sure that you close all of these in. And so an interesting and easy application for this would be if you wanted to use this to create a road with walls along next to it, you could do the same thing. So you could run Curvature, height of six feet, and then you could select these edge curves 
like this. You can see I've selected all of these. We're gonna run curvature again. We're gonna set our top, heat, top height here to seven feet and hit the enter key. And so what that does is that'll generate additional geometry around the outside that you can use to make up this wall. You might want to create your faces on, or you might wanna create your ramp and add those faces first before you come in here and try to add your exterior walls. So that might make doing this a little bit easier. And in this situation to make this simpler, I'm gonna take both of these. And this time, when I create this wall, whoops, when I create this wall, I'm gonna generate them in a group. So in this case, I'm gonna generate this, and then I'm gonna cut these, and I'm gonna go inside the group, and I'm gonna do an edit, paste in place. So basically what I've done is I've pasted these edges in here. So otherwise you might get some weird stuff going on with your uh, faces, but you can see how you can use this in order to generate this ramp pretty quickly. So this is a great tool for generating ramps when used in conjunction with Curvaloft. One other thing I wanna know is this works with basically any kind of curve. So this curve, for example, will do the same thing. So we can set this as a, as a group, and then you can see how this curve, even though it's a different kind of curve, will generate ramps as well. Same thing for this spiral over here. Even if we were to offset this spiral in and then run this tool, that's gonna generate that same geometry in here. And same thing where I'm just going to explode this group. But same thing where if you select these edges, you can use Curvaloft to add those walls in here really quickly, allowing you to create actual solid ramps inside of SketchUp. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Have you used this extension? Can you think of some fun uses for it? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. Um, if you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. Just make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.